And welcome everybody to This Week on DNG Radio. I'm your host, Sherman Ray. This Week on DNG Radio is the weekly radio call-in show produced by the Diversity Networking Group. Today's guest host, or the, the guest we have today, is Don Marie Saratella. She is the founder and president of, gosh, Don Marie, I forgot, Direct Selling Solutions. I'm sorry. I, I was thinking about your tagline on this one. Uh, but Don Marie, before we get to you, I want to talk a little bit about the Diversity Networking Group and what we're all about. For those of you that this might be the first time you're ever hearing about the, the Diversity Networking Group, we are a group of, you know, of business investors and entrepreneurs and, and people of like minds who get together on a weekly basis and we brainstorm, we mentor each other, and it's a great old time. There are about a hundred of us now, and we've actually added in a new group. Uh, which is called the Christian Business Connection, and so it's it's been a great uh, a great time that we've had. Um, one of our uh, members, Don Marie, is just uh, she's such a, a person full of so many talents that uh, when uh, I knew that she was going to be on the show, I said, you know what, I'm I'm so excited because a lot of people need to hear Donna about what you do, and so uh, one of the things we want to begin to start with because we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about a lot of, of other things. We're going to get right into talking to you. First of all, I want to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you. Good. Appreciate having me on. Well, I'm glad. And and for those of you that are on the webcam right now, many of you uh, know we've got the webcam up and running. Don Marie is actually the short Jamaican guy. No, she's not. <laughs> she, she's actually the one over here. And so Don Marie, um, Don Marie, you've got a slight accent. I do. A, a slight accent. So tell everybody, I mean, where are you from originally? Originally from Chicago, Illinois. Mm-hmm. And so you've been out here in Las Vegas? For about four years. I actually am uh, from Orlando, <coughs> Florida. Mm -hmm. I lived in Chicago until I was 11, then I moved to Florida, and now I'm a resident of Las Vegas, and I love it. Yeah, I know. Vegas is, and, and so Vegas has been, you know, uh, I don't know, you, knowing a little bit about you, you've, you've started a, a great new business, and so have you found that you're finding some great, uh, great marketing tools and great people to work with out here? Absolutely. Through Diversity Networking Group, I've found a number of great people, great business people. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to connect with new businesses, small businesses, large businesses, through a lot of the networking that I've done since I've been out here. Okay, well, and before we get to your business, I'm gonna talk, because we were, up, up, before we started uh, the show today, we were talking a little bit about your past and everything else. So let's let's start at the beginning a little bit, get everybody up to speed with who Don Marie Saratella is. So you're from Chicago, um, you've got a, a very colorful family that we were talking about. Um, so tell us a little bit about you growing up. Well, I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, and I was the last of six children. Uh, my dad was a criminal lawyer for a very special family in Chicago. Oh. And um, my mother was a PE teacher, so they were always working. And uh, I had a great upbringing until I was about 10, 11 years old. And then, oh, wow. So you have brothers and sisters? Yes, five of them. Five, so all yeah, over the country. All over the country. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly large family. Mm -hmm. So your your dad was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Mom was a PE teacher. Mm -hmm. I bet mm -hmm. you had a lot of stuff to talk about in the afternoons. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so, and so some of the families that your your dad worked with, we probably won't talk about them a little bit. But but you unless you want to talk about them. So so uh, you, your dad had some high profile clients. Though. No, oh, absolutely. He was a criminal attorney in Chicago with the last name of Saratella. <laughs> so, so, so we won't talk about all the fr the friends, but we could say a la Oscar Goodman. Could we, could we say safely that that's how you're... Sort of, kind of. Sort of, kind of. So, so your dad, you ended up moving to Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, how old were you then? I was 11 when we moved to Florida, so mm -hmm. I don't remember too much about Chicago mm -hmm. other than Kitty Land. <laughs> yeah, an amusement like. park in Chicago. Okay, so now you're in Florida. So what? So what happened in Florida? Well, in Florida, I grew up, went to high school, and uh, began working for the American Red Cross. I was the okay. youngest administrator of um, health services. Taught CPR, first aid, and water safety okay. um, to about seven thousand people over seven years. Oh my gosh! So it was very exciting. We were. I was an instructor trainer, so I got to teach the instructors. Mm -hmm. And what I found was there was a lot of duplication in that business. Mm -hmm. You had to do things the same way every time you did a CPR class or a first aid class. Okay. So that duplication kind of went into my business a little bit later. Okay. And so now you're with with you're with Red Cross. Now what and I think we were talking about this before, but you actually were able to formulate some of their uh, their training. Yes, um, the back injury prevention program. I was named on that um, particular 
um, lesson that they did. Mm -hmm. And um, I founded the National Drowning Prevention Coalition when I was wow. working with the American Red Cross. And you were like 12 years old by then. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you were a fast learner. You, yes. you, you were a prodigy. Yeah, I learned real quick. <laughs> you learned. So now how many people did that, uh, did that, uh, that work get out to? How um, many people well, the, used that? The Sun, the, it started as a Suncoast and it went to the national because it really did um, reach nationally through the Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. uh, Association. And we were able to reach about 47, 45, somewhere in there, um, Parks and Recreation um, organizations and they implemented our drowning prevention program. So it, it went across the country. Wow, so how many people do you think that, I mean, how many, do you think a couple hundred, a couple oh, thousand? I think tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. We had um, tray liners, there were over 500,000 tray liners put out in McDonald's with a big oh bear on it and the drowning prevention safety rules. Oh my god. So we had tons of exposure. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Now, now uh, let's move back just a little bit because something had to get into you because your business now is you help, you're a consultant now mm -hmm. with Direct Selling Solutions. Uh, and, but what do you see, I mean, now looking back in hindsight, can you see what you were doing then and how it actually plays into what you're doing oh, now? Oh, sure, sure. After the American Red Cross, I went to work for uh, three oral surgeons. Mm -hmm. They had three surgical centers. Mm -hmm. And everything they did was about duplication. The tray setups were the same in each office. Mm -hmm. Doctors wanted everything consistent. Sure. So I saw how duplication played into that business as well. And then when I went on to have my own business, I entered into the world of direct selling. Mm -hmm. And in direct selling, which is um, MLM, party plan, network marketing, mm -hmm. those are all components of the direct selling industry. But when I started to do work in that industry, I found that duplication was a huge, huge component to the direct selling industry. Wow, so you were able to translate that, that thing that you saw and you were seeing it consistent across the board with a lot of these industries. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, in a little bit, and we'll give them a little tease on what you're doing, because right, and now, now you've you've taken all these skills and everything else, and now you're with Direct Selling Solutions. Right. You know, tell everybody a little bit about Direct Selling Solutions. We're going to get into it in the second segment. We're going to really get into it. Okay. But um, what is Direct Selling Solutions? Well, it's a consulting um, firm, and we do two things. Mm -hmm. We help people figure out which home-based business would be best for them mm -hmm. based on their career, their lifestyle, the products they use and love every day. And then we also uh, work with direct selling companies and I do compliance work for them. So when an independent representative uh, breaks the policies and procedures, I'm actually the terminator. Yeah, people actually do that? Yeah, they, they, they break they the break policies the... and procedures and Gosh, the company I've terminates them. <laughs> So, so you're saying that people in direct selling sometimes bend the rules, bend the rules. Rest, and, yes, and you yes. have to be the hammer. Yeah, I get to suspend them and terminate them and wow. warn them and tell them what they did wrong and keep all that documentation for the company. Isn't that funny? And for those of you who are just tuning into the, the show right now, this is This Week on DNG Radio. I'm your host, Sherman Wright. Uh, in the hot seat today, we've got Donna Marie Saratella with Direct Selling Solutions. She's talking a little bit about her business, her consulting business, which is Direct Selling Solutions and how she has to be the hammer sometimes of truth in, a, in, a, in an industry that is uh, literally, there's new companies, Donna Marie, you probably agree yeah, with this, yeah. there's new companies popping up every week. Thousands of them. Thousands of them. Yes, and yes. you get to be the one who tells these folks, mm -hmm. guess what folks, you need to be in compliance mm -hmm. because you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and, and to tell individuals that are looking for home-based business, which ones can be problematic mm -hmm. um, based on a number of factors, which I know we'll talk about in the next segment. Mm -hmm. um, but that really is important to look at those particular criteria mm -hmm. when you're selecting a company mm -hmm. because there's companies out there that frankly are illegal. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah and that's what gives it a, a, a bad name yes. for direct selling. Yes, absolutely. And, and it's funny because direct selling is, is, is pure sales. I mean, it's just it's one of the best ways of getting your product out in the market. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are a lot of companies that are just unscrupulous, and I would even say scandalous, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get to be the one to let everybody know, guess what, that you need to begin to uh, bring into compliance so that you don't make it bad for everybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, Donna Marie, in our next segment, let's talk a little bit more about direct selling, about some of the stats on it, some of the, because uh, we've been talking about this a little bit, and we're going to talk a little bit about the book that you're in. Okay. And um, I think people would really love to hear more about that. All right. Sounds good, Sherman. Great. Thanks so much. Hey, once again, folks, this is This Week on DNG Radio. I'm your host, Sherman Wright. We will be back in just a minute. 
So stay tuned. We're with Don Marie Saratello from Direct Sound Solutions. Be back. Clear. Oh, it's just a delight. Waste the whole day.
And welcome back, folks, to This Week on D&G Radio. I'm your host, Sherman Ray, and we've got in the studio today Donna Marie Saratella. Hey, Donna Marie, we were last talking about um, your, your getting involved in direct selling solution, and, and we want to talk a little bit about direct selling and really what you do and, and some of the things that many people in our audience um, need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, now, tell us a little bit about direct selling, direct sales, multi-level marketing, and really some of, uh, some of the things that we're, and we'll kind of get into. Okay, great. We'll, we'll well, as I mentioned, direct selling is an industry, and in that industry, network marketing, party plan, and MLM companies come into play. Um, those three types of programs are different from one another, but basically they all have a similarity. Mm -hmm. They're companies that use a distribution model to sell their products and services. Mm -hmm. So it's through word of mouth instead of buyers and jobbers and all of the things that go with advertising for a company. This is direct sales to the consumer. So the independent representatives represent your products to the consumer directly they sell the products and then they make a commission on those sales. Okay, so so uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, an example would be rather than you having a brick and mortar business mm -hmm. where you've got somebody inside the store who's actually selling the products, these people actually you find a distribution of, of, of people who would actually go out door to door, word of mouth, mm -hmm. and actually sell those same products. Right, and it's basically that they sell to the <coughs> people that trust them, that know them, that like them. Mm -hmm. So friends and family, uh, business associates. The warm market, as we call it. Okay. And uh, how big of an industry is that? Oh, it's huge. As a matter of fact, one out of eight households has a home-based business of some kind. Oh my gosh, one out of eight. One out of eight. And there's 15 million people involved in the nation and 74 million worldwide. Isn't that crazy? So it's a huge, huge industry. Oh my gosh. And so they, they actually sell everything from brushes to... Coffee to... Mm -hmm electricity mm -hmm. to pills, potions, lotions, you name it. <laughs> you name it. Well, and what's the, the break of that? Because I, I heard that there's actually more women than there are guys. Oh, absolutely. 90% yeah. are women and uh, they're in the party plan industry. Okay. So as you know, um, Party Light, uh -huh. Sensi, um, Tupperware, yeah. Mary, Kay, Mary Kay, those are all party plan where the distributors actually hold parties in people's homes, mm -hmm. they present their products and services, and then the, the folks buy right there on the spot. Yeah, well it sounds like something great for a, um, for a, a company that you've got a lot of people who, who are making commission, but you've got a distribution source mm -hmm. on, on getting these things out. Mm -hmm. So what could be, I mean, what could really there be a, a, pit, a pitfall in something like that? Well, I think because it's such a low price point for entry, mm -hmm. that people don't give it the consideration that it deserves. Mm -hmm. If you buy a franchise and spend $500,000 on the franchise, you're going to go to training and okay. you're going to learn how to be successful. You're not going to walk away from $500,000 investment. Okay. But in direct selling, you can get involved with the program for as little as $99, wow. um, as much as $1,500, $1,000. But when you only spend $100, $200, it's easy to walk away from it without yeah. giving it an honest effort. Yeah, I, I understand that too, and, I, and it's funny because uh, I, I've, I've been in Amway before. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can say Amway, right? If yeah, not, we can say that. sure. Okay, if not, you can bleep this out. But, but we, since we can say Amway, right? I've been in Amway before, and I've been in a, in a couple of them, mm -hmm. and um, and I notice there's a lot of people are really excited about it. But, but if you ask those people, you know, a year later, are they still in it? Mm -hmm. Generally, those people have gone on to one or two or three right. different things by then. Right. Well, the retention level in direct sales is 20%. Um, so out of 100, 20 people will still be with the company. Wow. After a month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> after a month. After a month. It, it, it's not a very good retention yeah. model. Actually, and I heard that it was like 90 days. So you're yeah. talking about a month. Yeah. Though, yeah. A, a month, month to 90 days. It, Pretty much people get out of it within the first 90 days because life gets in the way. Something happens and they just don't give it the attention that it really deserves. Yeah, okay. So so what do you help people with? Because now Direct Selling Solution, is a, you consult, but you also say not, not only do you work with the corporations that are, that are actually the companies mm -hmm. uh, being compliance, but you will actually work with the individuals who are looking for these type of businesses. Mm -hmm. What do you actually do with those folks? Well, there's so many that, that enter into the uh, industry. There's over 175 
thousand people each week, and I have it written down just so I know. I always say, I'm looking at this. I always say a year. I thought that was a typo. No, it's each <laughs> week, week 175,000 oh people become involved in this industry. Yeah. So there's a tremendous amount of people that recognize the value of home based business, mm -hmm. they recognize the value of direct sales and co um, commission based sales. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing that's so important about the direct selling industry is that you get paid a little bit on the efforts of your entire team, your mm -hmm. organization that you put together. So that creates residual income. Okay. Residual income is a very good thing. Okay, so can we all say it's a good, good thing. thing? Yeah, residual <laughs> income is a good thing. Okay. So, so I want you to do me a favor, Don Rick. I want you to look in the camera because you're going to be talking to somebody who is going to be some prospective person who wants to say, hey, Don Rick, I've got this company I'm looking for. What is going to be the first thing you're going to tell that person? Okay, well, I do a consultation with those folks. It's only $99. And mm -hmm. we look at the companies that are involved in the industry and we find something that's a good fit for the person. So let's say they're, uh, they're involved in accounting. And um, they're not probably going to want to do a vitamin program. Yeah. Um, if they're an accountant, I would suggest a, a, a legal shield, a prepaid legal, mm -hmm. or a program that's involved in the consumer base that the accountant is involved in. Mm -hmm. So they don't go so far out of their industry that they can't really combine it and make it effective. Okay. So I found I'm I'm Joe Schmo. I'm off. I'm a, I'm a I'm a construction guy. Mm -hmm. And I said, Donna Marie, I found this great company and it looks wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what is going to be one of the things, one of the caveats that you're going to tell me about this company? Because Donna Marie, they tell me they've got this this new and improved thing. It's the best price thing, great comp plan, and everything else. And what are you going to tell me about to be wary of with mm -hmm. the company? Well, the first thing we look at is the um, company itself. Mm -hmm. How long has the company been in business? Mm -hmm. If it hasn't been in business for two years or greater, there's a there's a huge percentage of those companies that fail within mm -hmm. the first two years. Wow. So if it's been on, not been around for two years. Yes. Well, and, and then you have to look at the person that's looking for the company. Yeah. And do they want to take a higher risk mm -hmm. with the program that might produce a lot of money quicker mm -hmm. um, or go with a more conservative program like a party light or a Tupperware? Mm -hmm. So there are conservative programs and there are programs that would have potentially high risk. Mm -hmm. So I look at the company and show the person with the company numbers. How much are they creating in annual sales? Mm -hmm. We look at the company. Then we look at the product. Okay. The product, it's important that the product be consumable. Okay. In the direct selling industry, in order to make it a residual sale, where there's money, commissions coming in each month mm -hmm. for no effort whatsoever other than selling them one time, that's a residual income stream. Sure, sure. And that is a wonderful thing. Yeah. You can't get residual income if you're selling pianos. That's or um, water filters yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So now I come to you and I said, Don Marie, this company, all they want is they want $1,000 from me and they want me to buy and I don't have to sell anything. All I've got to do is go out and find other people that will pay $1,000 to be a part of this company. Right. Would you tell them that this is probably something that you would consider as a company? Well, it sounds to me like it's a recruitment based program. Mm -hmm. um, when you pay $1,000 for something, um, that would be a product or service. It wouldn't be a, a starter kit to get into the business. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying a product or service, of course, you're going to be the customer. Mm -hmm. Well, it, there's always a red flag when it's the distributor is the customer. Mm -hmm. And the fact that somebody coming into the program is generating income. You can't have recruitment-based bonuses. The sale has to be made on a product or service. Okay, so that's one of the biggest things. That they're actually selling right. a product. Right, and yeah. not a money game. Uh -huh. um, there was just a company that went down, and we can talk about it because it went down, um, Zeke Rewards. Okay. Zeke Rewards has been alleged to be a, a, a pyramid, a money, a money scheme. Sure. Um, they specifically... Um, had no product. They, there wasn't a product base. Yeah. They had a kind of a pie in the sky product okay. and that didn't go really well yeah. with the regulators. Yeah, because they want you to sell something. They actually want something that is going to change hands. Yes. 
you know, either it'll be on an auto ship or something like mm -hmm. that, but it's got to be some kind of consumable. Thing. Yes, or or not consumable <clears throat> even, but you're not going to get as much bang for the buck if you're with a non-consumable product company. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we have in this segment we were going to get to your book. We're going to get into our next in our next segment okay. because I really like to talk a little bit about the book because you've actually got a couple of chapters in it. Okay. Um, so for for those of you who are just joining us right now, this is this week on DNG Radio. I'm your host Sherman Wright. Next to me, we've got Don Marie Saratella from Direct Selling Solutions, and we will be back on our next segment. We're going to talk a little bit more about the direct selling game and direct selling solutions. Stay tuned, folks. All right, and welcome back, folks. This is This Week on DNG Radio. I'm your host, Sherman Ray. In the studio today, we've got Donna Marie Saratella with Direct Selling Solutions. And Donna Marie, we were talking about some amazing facts about the direct selling game, which I really, once again, I, I, I can actually see your notes. Most Many of you who are watching the webcam can't see your notes. But I can see them, and I thought you had a typo there that we're talking about the amount of people who actually get involved in direct selling. And I thought that was a yearly thing, too. So, yeah. and, and once again, you said that are 175,000 people. A week. A involved. week. Well, that's that's pretty good numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. And they say that there's a shortage of jobs here in America. Well, I believe that the shortage of jobs is because of the lack of training. People are not trained in how to network. Yeah. They don't understand how important it is to build relationships in business mm -hmm. because they've been involved in the B2B world mm -hmm. where it's not about relationships. It's true. That's so, true. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> gosh. Amazing. Now let's talk a little bit more. What there are some other things that you try to help people out with when they're working or they're looking for a company, and mm -hmm. some of the things that, that that you would say, hey, this is the checklist of some of the things that you want to look at mm -hmm. in, if you're going to get involved in the direct selling. Game. Well, besides the company itself and the products, you want to look at the leadership. Mm -hmm. I have gone on and Googled people's names that own companies before, mm -hmm. and I have found just on Google um, lawsuits and. 
uh, bankruptcies. And, Is that like a red flag? You know, uh, it's a red flag. It's a red flag. They've had other companies that have mm -hmm. shut down. Mm -hmm. You can find all this on Google. So take the name of the president, mm -hmm. the name of the founder, and Google them. It's okay. real easy. Yeah. Leadership is so important to the company. Yeah, and you know I am on leadership. I mean, I believe everything rises and falls on leadership. Yes. So if that guy is only, if that guy just got out of the joint, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now he's starting a company, yeah. you know, a yeah. week later, yeah. Yeah. probably something wrong. We saw um, in Excel when the deregulation went through, mm -hmm. so many people made gazillions. I can't even say billions. They made gazillions oh, yeah, with um, the with the market of deregulated phones. Mm -hmm. And what happened when, with Excel was the owner just sold the company right out from under the distributors. And they lost that ability to create residual income. Oh my gosh. So yeah. you have to watch the owners. You've yeah. got to watch that leadership and make sure that it's good. Sure. So what else should they look for? Well, the training. Remember that duplication that I had talked about? Training is so important. There has to be a system for duplication. Okay. Um, most companies will have maybe a four-minute sizzle call, as they call it, which okay. introduces you to the company, mm -hmm. maybe a 10-minute video, and then you get back to the person that introduced you, and the next step would be a three-way call. Okay. So there's a procedure. It's three steps and you're in. So that's basically the, the training. Mm -hmm. um, and then going to all of the events, of yeah. course, going to the meetings, going to the events, seeing what the company you know represents as their program and their products. True. Um, the other thing is the timing. You want to get involved in a company before it hits momentum. Mm -hmm. And momentum usually hits at about $200 million. Okay, well, what do you mean by momentum? Momentum is where the distributors are working so hard and product sales are going so well that the company actually goes into a vertical rise. It, it creates momentum. Mm -hmm. There are so many sales going on. People just know the name of the company. When you talk to them about the name of the company, they want to get it going, they're excited, they want to move forward because okay. they've heard about it and it's hot in the industry. Okay, so it's hot. It's hot. But it's hot, so it's got momentum. Yeah, it's got, awesome. it gets momentum. Yeah. Well, and that's awesome. where the greatest amount of residual income is. Sure, it's because burnt. it's like ripe fruit everywhere. It's yeah. dropping off every place. And you're, you're like a farmer just gathering up all these people that want to be a part of your business. Absolutely. That's awesome. That is what it is. And yeah. then the last factor is the compensation plan. Oh, this is big. Oh, it's big. Yeah. Um, the binary programs have pretty much gone out of the industry. There are mm -hmm. still a few great ones out there. Mm -hmm. USANA is a binary program, and mm -hmm. that's a pretty big program. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the binary programs have gotten into a little bit of hot water because they're impossible to balance out. We were sure. just talking now, about yeah, that. Yeah, so explain that to people. What do they mean by, uh, you mean by binary? Well, binary starts with two independent reps, and it grows two by two by two. Mm -hmm. um, when you get your first two independent reps, the company kind of splits you in the middle. So there's a left side and a right side. Mm -hmm. Some companies require that you have a 50-50 balance of sales in order to trigger a payment of a commission. Okay. Some companies say you have to have a two-third to one-third mm -hmm. ratio for it. But whatever you have, it's usually problematic trying to get. So you don't, sure. there's breakage for the company. Yeah. The company earns a lot of breakage in a binary program. Yeah, see I had that problem because I had one side, and I was in the industry before, I had one side that was doing just great. I mean, I had hundreds of people, and the other side had like two. Right. You know, <laughs> and so everybody was making money underneath me, but I wasn't making a great amount of money mm -hmm. because I wasn't balanced out. Yeah. So, yeah, so. I always wondered about that, Sherman. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I walk with a limp. That's, that's it. Don Marie, you brought, um, you brought a book with you, and I really wanted to get to this book because I know a lot of people uh, would like to know about it. Because one of the things that, uh, that we found out about you is not only are you a snazzy dresser and a great dancer, um, um, but you are an author also, and you brought a book with you, and, um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold the book up. And uh, tell, us, tell uh, everybody what this book is. Well, it's called Build It Big, 101 Insider Secrets from Top Direct Selling Ex Experts. Mm -hmm. And it's a combination of short stories about the industry. Mm -hmm. There are some incredible people that have contributed to this book and they talk about how to select the right company, what to look out for, um, product offerings, how to do a great party plan, 
there are just some incredible authors in this book and it would be one that I would pick up immediately if I was getting into direct selling. Oh yeah, and, and you've actually got a couple of chapters in this book. I do. I've written two chapters. One of them is called Shower the People You Love with Appreciation. Okay. Because recognition and appreciation builds companies. Mary Kay built her company on pink Cadillacs and diamond rings. They do. You know. Recognition, that's what built it. That's it. And then the other chapter is called How to Select a direct selling company mm -hmm. and we look at those factors that we've been discussing yeah. and and come up with a reasonable suggestion one or two programs that might be good for someone to try based on their uh, demographics sure and that was one of the things that that actually kind of got you thinking about starting direct selling solutions right right absolutely and the attorneys i was referred to direct <coughs> selling by an attorney that got me into it back when Home Shopping Channel wanted to become a direct selling company. Really? And their board of directors put a nix on it. They yeah. wouldn't allow it to go out the door. Wow. So the attorney that did all the work had trained me in how to do this compliance work. And it just snowballed from the attorneys that recommended me for compliance work. Wow. And so, now how have you, because we've been talking a lot about the individual and everything else, how is the, um, how is working with corporations, the larger companies, how is that working out for you? Are they are you finding a lot of pushback on that? Or are they really welcoming you, saying, yeah, Don Marie, we've been looking for you forever? Well, it depends. If it's yeah. a startup, they're real interested in compliance because they don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. If it's a huge company, sometimes they look at it as a negative and they don't want to teach their distributors about compliance, <laughs> okay. which is big trouble because yeah. the regulators come in no matter how many issues there are, they can come in and investigate a company. Yeah. So it's really important to have your ducks in a row. That is. Now you said that you just got a phone call this morning. Yes, I did. For a new company. Would, would you like to make that announcement right sure, now? Sure, sure. Quarter, quarter to seven this morning, a company by the name of Anita Barrett Rowe. It's a jewelry program mm -hmm. that's getting ready to start. It's out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Yeah, very nice place. It's very exciting. They're going to use my compliance management manual, which I have written, and open up their compliance department when they open up their company. Well, that's exciting. Congratulations yeah. to you. you. Thank and so you. one of the things that you were saying about answering the phone at 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> is, it, now what would you say to somebody who gets, gets a phone call at 7 o'clock in the morning? Oh, be super sweet. <laughs> <laughs> just, just answer the phone going, hello. You never know. I remember a consultant used to say she wanted to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. So every time she answered the phone, she would think in her mind, it's Australia calling. Yeah. <laughs> to ask her to do a speaking engagement. Yes. So sure enough, one time it was Australia calling. Yes, it was. Isn't that <laughs> awesome? Well, Don Marie, it's been wonderful talking to you today, but you know, people really need to get a hold of you. Okay. Now, if they need to get a hold of you to talk about either compliance or they're looking for a company that they just, you know, they're kind of iffy, how would they get a hold of you? Well, of course they can come meet me at the Diversity Networking Group on Thursday mornings at uh, Panera, mm -hmm. but they can reach me. Um, I, can I share my number? Sure. Okay, it's 702-463-7027. Say it one more time, just in case. 702-463-7027. They can go to directsellingsolutions.com and see my website. And of course they can email me at directsolutions at cox.net. Oh wow, that's awesome. So Don Marie, I'll tell you, you've been a an awesome guest to, today. <clears throat> I think we've found out some great things about the direct selling uh, game and really that there's some pitfalls in it. And they, people need people like you to, to, to help us navigate through this whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So folks, I'm, I'm, I'm putting out a, the, uh, the word right now, use Don Marie if you are getting into the business or if you've got a company that you just kind of, you don't know if you're really in compliance, call Donna Marie and she'll take care of you. Thank you once again, Donna Marie. Thank you, Sherman. I appreciate it. Wonderful. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Hey, this has been This Week on DNG Radio, folks. If you would like to know anything about this show, uh, This Week on DNG Radio, or anything about the Diversity Networking Group, go to our website. It's at www.diversitynetworkinggroup.com. That's diversitynetworkinggroup.com. That's just one G. And you can find out all about us. If you'd like to know and you'd like to find out if you could get your own radio show, I'm really encouraging you to get a hold of Million Quinteris. And he is over at thecityfm.com. And you can find out all about getting your own show. Million actually has candy. He will take care of you folks. It's just a wonderful place to be at. We will see you next week, folks. I believe we've got D.W. Grant who's going to talk a little bit about his book. He's a new author. 
We will be back next week at 1030 on the cityfm.com. That This has been This Week on DNG Radio. That's a wrap, folks. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. That's a wrap.